Mark, Michael, Don, Peter, how are you today? I'm great, gentlemen. How are you? We're doing fine. How much are the Yankees going to be affected by no Glaber Torres for at least the next 10 games? I mean, they're going to miss Glaber, but one of the great things about this Yankee lineup is it's so deep. You can miss one player and, uh, and really not skip a beat. The, the guys that they have filling in, whether it be Walker or Drury or, or I mean, heck, give Tyler Wade a few at bats, see if he can do something. Um, you know, you're going to bat him eighth or ninth anyway, and it's it's not a big deal. I don't think they're going to miss him too much. Now, I, I don't know the exact definition of yeah, chronic, but Aaron Boone said that this has been a hip issue for a few years with Torres. Would that bother you that a kid 21 years old has a history of hip problems? It, it definitely would, and um, that's that's kind of surprising um, that that a 21 year old would have anything chronic. Actually, um, so you know, you know, sometimes we we have these little aches and pains from childhood that that you know, my my right knee was always bothering me when I was a kid. You know, I had that Oshkosh slaughters. That I had that time. both my knees. Yeah. Wow. Great athlete time. Great athlete time, Don. So, oh, um, <laughs> well, it, thank you. But, <laughs> but it didn't bother me until literally like in my 30s. So, you know, something chronic could just be a very, you know, very mild, small little thing here and there. Um, so I wouldn't put too much stock into Booney saying it's a, it's a chronic thing and we shouldn't be too worried. Hopefully we shouldn't be too worried. The Yankees have played seven series this season against teams that are currently in first place. They've won six of those series. There's nothing this team has done that has given me any pause whatsoever. I think they're really, really good. But when you look up, they're a game behind the Red Sox. Are the Red Sox better than the Yankees? No, you know, I, I feel we talk about this every week, and it goes back and forth, right? So after watching the Yankees-Red Sox series, three blowouts, you know, not, none of them were good games, but I leave that series saying as long as Chris Sale is not on the mound, the Yankees are a better team. You know, and and you put Chris Sale against Luis Severino, and I think it's a toss up in that in in a, in a game one type situation or or a winner take all, um, you know, 163rd type game. But um, I, I still like the Yankees. I really do. I, I think I think over the long haul, um, you get Tanaka back. You figure out who your fourth and fifth starters are going to be. I still think that the Yankees will outlast the Red Sox in the end. And the one thing about Sale, Mark, if, if you look at the arc of his career, and he's a brilliant pitcher, he's not the same pitcher the middle of August on. He, he's just he's too small and throws too hard, and I think that he, he fatigues. Now, I know that Cora's managing him a little bit differently this year, keeping his pitch count lower, but at no point in his career has he ever been as good in September as he was in May. I know, and that's a big issue if, if I'm the Red Sox. And, you know, like you, you start looking at trends, and I'm sure early in his career, I mean, Chris Sale didn't pitch a lot of high-pressure, high-leverage games in September, you know. And so he comes over to the Red Sox, and you look at that trend and say, wait a second, we need to figure this out. So I think the Red Sox, after last year's playoff performance, probably – you know, took his off-season training and, and maybe did something different. They're definitely taking his innings down, trying to take his pitches down. Maybe you stop throwing as many pitches in your bullpen sessions. You know, uh, I played with some, some great pitchers in my day, and the older pitchers, you know, John Smoltz, for example, late in the season would throw very little in between starts because he wanted to save those bullets. And I think the Red Sox will, will try to figure this out and make sure it doesn't become a problem for sale in September. All right, here's another problem for the Red Sox. David Price against the Yankees. Let, let's say he's lights out the rest of the year, but every time he faces the Yankees, he loses. Could you afford to pitch him in a best-of-five divisional round series? You know what? It's, he's, a t he's, he's a tough situation for me because you're paying him so much money to be you know, a top of the rotation starter. He's probably their third or fourth best pitcher in uh, in a series against the Yankees. You know, you, you you look at him and say, if he's pitching really well, I got to put him out there. But I'm holding my breath if I put him out there against the Yankees. Nationals are a game under 500. They had a players only meeting after getting getting swept by the Red Sox yesterday. Um, what are those like? Does anything get accomplished? Does it get loud? Do people point fingers? Do voices get raised? What are those players only meetings like? Yeah, I've been in a bunch of them during my career, and it's 
Half of them go go really well, and, and guys leave the meeting kind of pumped up, and maybe there was uh, some air to clear uh, in the clubhouse or, or, or some things that needed to be talked about, and, and everyone's kind of on the same page and rolling out for batting practice or, or you know, after the game feeling good about themselves. The other half of the time, you just – just can't stand each other even more. <laughs> and so, and, and that's just the fact of the matter. I mean, when you're on a bad team, I've been on plenty of teams that were, you know, 20 games out in July, and you know, you're sticking up the joint, and and teams and guys just are fi- trying to find something to uh, to latch onto, and and most of the guys are checked out, and it's it's tough. I don't think the Nationals are checked out. So my guess is it was probably a positive meeting. Um, my guess is they do believe in the talent that they have. It was probably a, a rally the troops type meeting because when you're on a bad team and you have those, it just it usually doesn't go well. Uh, and I think the Nationals still have a very good roster. They need to start winning some games, though. Dan Grassa, our colleague, had a great tweet uh, yesterday. He said Bryce Harper hitting 215 with 89 strikeouts, 21 home runs. Did anybody ever consider paying Adam Dunn 200 million dollars? To a two-pronged question, has Harper, has the way baseball become, have turned Harper, a great player, into just a home run hitter? And if there was an Adam Dunn now, would he command big-time money since it's such a home run league now? No, Adam Dunn would not command big-time money. I think Adam Dunn is one of the most underrated players of, of the last 20 years because of the walks and the home runs and, and, you know, he did some great things, but so many players are hitting home runs. So many players are working walks now that he's not as, um, he wouldn't be as special today as he was five or 10 years ago. Um, Bryce Harper is one of the most interesting free agent cases of, of our lifetime, right? Because we know the talent is there when he's his best, there may be no one on the planet that's as good as him. But he's hitting 215 in a walk year. He is, if you look at the consistency of his career, he's had one great season, the MVP. He's had another half of a great season. And then he's been kind of above average. And then, and then and, also playoff disappointment. Yeah. And so, so if I look at the best players of this, uh, of the last 10 years, okay, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out, Mike Trout, I'm going to throw out Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Arenado. Uh, look at what Mookie Betts, Betts is doing right now. I mean, these guys are consistently getting it done. And their dip is like a, a 5 or 10% off of their highs. Bryce Harper has these wild swings of great months, bad months, great years, average years. And while if I signed him to a, a $30 million a year contract, I would really hope for the best. If it doesn't work out, there were some signs that maybe you shouldn't have given him that money. Mm. Talking with Mark Teixeira, his weekly segment on the Michael K. Show. I was looking through the standings today, and I did some quick math. The Orioles are 37 games under 500, which to me is startling. So they have the worst record in baseball. And the, and the reason it's startling, and maybe I'm completely off base, Mark, maybe you having been in a dugout field differently, I think Buck Walter is one of the best managers in baseball, and it's not even close. Can you imagine, how, how does this happen that the Orioles could be 37 games under 500 with Buck Walter as the manager? Yeah, it's, it's really tough to watch. Um, because Buck is there's there's very few men in baseball that I have more respect for than Buck Showalter. What he does with uh, as little talent as he's actually had in Baltimore over the last few years, and still making the playoffs and still being very competitive, uh, it's tough to watch this team lose so many games because you know Buck cares and he's the most prepared. But they they just unfortunately have signed the wrong player every single step of the way. Some of their young players didn't really turn out. They had some young stud pitchers and Gosman and Bundy that really didn't work out. And, you know, they signed four DH slash first basemen. I mean, it's just like... That's insane. There, there's too many of those guys on the roster, and it's all kind of coming back to hurt them right now. Yeah, I mean, and Chris Davis may be one of the all-time worst signings ever. It, it, you know, he, yes, and he is a, a perfect example of a guy who needs a... Uh, a change of scenery. Um, there are certain players that, for whatever reason, get in a rut 
with the team that they're on. And it's the fans, it's it's the traffic on the way to the ballpark, it's the guy that lives next door to you in your in your apartment building, and everything just comes crashing down on you, and you just need to get out of Dodge. Um, and I think Chris Davis, because I still think he's got talent, you know, get a new hitting coach, get a new new ballpark, new change of scenery, and hopefully turn that thing around because you've got a few more years uh, at, at 23 plus million bucks on his deal, and that's tough for the Orioles to swallow. Yeah. Well, perfect segue into Matt Harvey. Is this just a case of change of scenery that he's pitching better, or did the Mets make a mistake? I think it is. I mean, I don't. I don't think the Mets made a mistake. Um, I think they they tried everything with Matt Harvey that they could, and. You know, listen, Matt Harvey's pitching well. He, he's not all of a sudden Justin Berlander. You know, he's pitching well, and he's, he's on a team that's, that's not going to the playoffs. There's no pressure. Um, I'm sure that he took a really deep breath when he got to Cincinnati and just said, all right, I'm going to go play baseball and not worry about being a dark knight and not worrying about all the, the baggage in New York. Um, and that was probably very – uh, refreshing for Matt Harvey, but I don't think that all of a sudden he was going to turn it around in New York and become that ace again. Yesterday, Carlos Gomez uh, struck out and went absolutely insane on a water cooler, uh, making Paul O'Neill look you know, docile compared to what Paul <laughs> used to do. <laughs> Have you ever been that angry, or did you ever see a teammate that angry? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've seen it all. I mean, you know, uh, everything gets caught on camera nowadays because there's just cameras on the and, and I think that um, we have more fun with it nowadays uh, with social media. But, oh, man, I've seen it all. I've, I've seen guys do all kinds of crazy stuff. I actually got real mad. I got mad at that umpire for calling me out on a bad, bad pitch. I ran up to the clubhouse to look at the video, and on the way out, I kicked a box, which I thought was kind of like full of T-shirts or something soft and it ended up being completely empty and I kicked a hole through the box and couldn't get it off my foot and so I was running around the clubhouse with a box stuck to my foot trying to get you know trying to get it off my foot everyone's laughing at me I'm still super upset like screaming my head off and I got this box on my foot running around the clubhouse trying to get that back down to the dugout so uh, I've, I've seen it all. Wish we had that video. A couple of text messages, Mark. <laughs> Mike from Northvale, New Jersey, asks, what's your favorite 4th of July barbecue dish, and do you do any of the cooking? Ooh, I do. I, I really do enjoy uh, grilling. Um, I'm just a, a standard burger guy. I love the big, fat, juicy burgers. Uh, and I cook them. You know, a lot of people say, you know, turn the heat up and, and sear them on both sides. I cook it slow and low heat. There you go. That way you don't burn the outsides. I close the lid. You know, some grillers are going to tell you, oh, you never close the lid on, on steak or red meat. Nope. Close the lid. Do a nice slow burn. Get the juices. You know, keep the juices in there. Throw some cheese on top, and I'm loving it. Josh Compatello from Rochester asks, have you ever texted a player on another team during the season for advice or to go over game plan against the Red Sox or even say, hey, thanks for beating them? Um, i got to think about that. I think the only guy that I've ever done that with um, is, is Michael Young. Um, you know, w one of the guys that I kind of trusted just with every pitcher that, that I ever saw and said, hey, um, I, I saw that you guys just played him when you got on somebody. Um, but, yeah, I, I didn't do it a lot. I, I kind of trusted my instincts, didn't want to have too many thoughts going into my uh, my head. But, listen, if, if a, a team that we were chasing got swept and my buddy was on the other team, I might text them a, uh, you know, a thumbs up or, or thanks for taking care of them. Finally, do you think the Nationals will make the playoffs or not? I don't. I, I, wow. I just wow. uh, I worry about Strasburg's health. Um, if 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 Murphy is still kind of hobbling a little bit, he doesn't look right. Zimmerman's you know not playing. Um, you know the, the the funny thing that everyone's been saying is their best player might be 19 years old. You yeah, know, your position player. Obviously, Max Scherzer is still a stud. And if I had one game to win in Major League Baseball, I'd probably have him out there on the mound to win one game right now. But um, I just I worry about their health, and I, I worry that this team just isn't going to make it over the hump because, the, listen, the, the Braves and the Phillies aren't going away. They're fun to watch. They're young. they got a lot of talent. And uh, the Nets now have you know two teams to jump up in the National League East. 
And gut feeling, do you believe that Bryce Harper will be a Yankee next year? No. You do not? I do not I do not believe so. I think there's a lot. I mean, there's a, a lot of young guys that are knocking on the door in, in New York right now um, to, to, to crack that Yankees lineup, and they're going to be making 600 grand or whatever the, the minimum is right now. To pay a Bryce Harper 30 million bucks when you really don't need more offense, you know, this is going to be a top – you know, two or three offense in baseball for the next five years, with or without Bryce Harper. Save that money and uh, get a few more arms. And do you think that Jay, Jay Happ would help this team? Absolutely. I think Happ and Hamels would both help this team. Uh, right now, I mean, who, who's your fourth starter? That's, that, someone is going to have to pitch big innings in, in the playoffs. Um, and, you know, right now you, you got Sebi, you got CeCe and Tanaka. Who's that fourth guy right now that, that you can really trust? Hap, or, and Hamels look better than anyone else right now. 